everyone, bonjour and welcome back to my channel. This is my video on seven rules for owning fewer clothes. And if you are here for the first time, hello, my name is Naya and I am a minimalist. Part of being a minimalist means that I do not have a lot of stuff and my wardrobe is no exception. If anything, it is definitely my main focus to curate exactly that to the best that it can be so that my wardrobe is filled with things that all go together and that I actually want to use and wear. And to achieve exactly that, here are some rules that I like to follow. My first rule to owning fewer clothes is to define your personal style. This is a classic first step to this exact rule set, but it is just the building stone off of all of it. At the stages before defining your personal style, you're more likely to get attracted to trend pieces or pieces that you see on someone else without really assessing whether that is something that actually suits you, would work in your life, and just in general, you are much more led to let the crow brain that lives inside you decide what shiny object it wants and will buy and take with you home. In my opinion, your personal style should be some sort of overlap of who you actually are and who you want to be. Of course, if who you want to be would wear a lot of stuff that definitely wouldn't really work in your practical everyday to day life, you're not very likely to stick to this style. But on the other end of that spectrum, if you tend to wear a lot of things that you're not really excited about because you want to adhere to your practical life, then you're also not likely to be happy with the clothes that you have in your wardrobe. I do home office most of the time, so if I didn't want to, I wouldn't have to wear a blazer, but wear a blazer because I deem it my personal style and it still sort of fits in with my day-to-day -day life even if I don't need to wear it. Don't confuse with who you actually want to be for your fantasy self though. The fantasy self is someone we don't really want to be but that we somehow identify with a little bit. That could be like some boho princess living on uh, a ranch or maybe you have like a secret goth person living inside of you. Basically these more extreme styles that would have absolutely nothing to do with our lives and that are more caricatured. When you finally decide to define your style I don't recommend including your fantasy self if you want to include her a little bit which is something that I have done. You can sort of like pick elements of who your fantasy self is and mix them with your real style. For me to satisfy my fantasy self in my day-to-day -day life, I have included fringes, studs, and spikes. And you can do this in small elements of your style or in your jewelry where it's easier to accommodate your fantasy self. But she should not be the defining person in your personal style. To build a little bit on top of this point, my second rule is to always go with a proof of concept. In order to own fewer clothes, it's important to have the things around that we actually want to wear. We often have this idea about the things that we should include in our wardrobe or that we want to keep around or that we want to get around to wear or that we want to buy so we can have them in our wardrobe. But usually I like to go off of a proof of concept when I decide to buy or keep an item. And what that means is, is this something you will historically wear? So when I buy something or plan to buy something or decide whether to keep something around in my wardrobe, I always have a look at, is this something I historically wear? Do I actually historically wear a denim jacket? Do I historically go for green in my wardrobe? Do I actually wear white jeans or is it maybe time to let go of that thought and feeling of making that work? Basically, build on the ideas that you already know are working and that you will historically reach for in your wardrobe. My number three rule for owning fewer clothes is to stick with a color scheme. This is another building stone to defining your style or it's another page to that book. If you don't have a certain color scheme going on in your wardrobe, it's extremely difficult to stick to few clothes because if you need to accommodate every color under the rainbow as part of your wardrobe, things will go much less together and it will also take you longer to decide on an outfit whenever you put something together. And just in general, there would be less of a cohesion to your personal style and just to your wardrobe in general. To have fewer clothes, accessing what colors you already wear, have a proof of concept of, and the colors you really enjoy that you know suit you, that also 
go together with some of the other colors in your wardrobe. Committing to just these colors can also hugely downsize your wardrobe. I sat down and did this very specifically to my own wardrobe about a year and a half ago. I actually sat down and put the colors into Photoshop, the ones that I knew I liked, the ones I knew I wanted to wear, and then I started work from there to see what other colors do I like, what other colors would suit the concept that I'm building on. And now when I have something in my wardrobe or when I did have something in my wardrobe or when I go shopping and something is not in my color scheme, it's very easy for me to leave that piece behind and not wanting to own it because I don't want to mess with my small wardrobe and the cohesion that I'm building on. Rule number four for owning fewer clothes and this is a personal mantra I like to repeat to myself and it is making a habit out of telling yourself I already have a blank. Whatever you have a tendency to holding on to or to be drawn to when you go out about and shop, if you already have something of that it might be worth reminding yourself. If you're out and about and see something you really like this could be a blue oversized sweater. Make a habit of telling yourself you already have an oversized blue sweater or if you don't just say you already have an oversized sweater. Do you really need one in blue or you already have a blue sweater? Do you really need one in oversized? I feel like reminding myself of what I already have and what my favorite is of that item and what I would reach for at home, it often stops me dead in wanting something new. Whenever I'm out and about and I see a trench coat that I really like, it's an item I'm often drawn to, I always tell myself, you already have a trench coat. And sure, eventually might want to add one in another color, but I still already have a trench coat. My rule number five for owning fewer clothes is to tailor your clothing. Have your clothing customized to fit you. I mean, it is your clothes, so if it doesn't fit you, there's really no point. And I feel like when we haven't gotten into the habit of having things custom, customized or tailored to fit us, even though it is actually in our wardrobe, we have a tendency to buy that same thing because we're trying to get a better fit, where if you already have something that's pretty good Having it customized to fit your body better might make you want to not add multiple of that item. Because once you have something that is really nice, you appreciate and that also fits perfectly, the search is over. This is something I do all the time. When I find an item that I really like that checks off all my boxes, if it's gaping a little bit at the chest or if the sleeves are a bit too puffy or if the waist is a bit too large, I just take it to my tailor and they make the small adjustments to make this customized to me. Thus making me feel a million times better about what I just bought and not needing to look for that exact item and add something similar to what I already have or to keep multiple items because they all do different things but you're looking for them to, to do the same if that makes sense. My rule number six for owning fewer clothes is to stop telling yourself that an item is nice and asking yourself how you feel in it instead. I think most of us are guilty of this, either holding on to things or accidentally adding things to our wardrobe because we think it's a nice item. I almost did this with a pair of shorts not long ago. I made an order from another story with a few pieces that I was looking to add to my wardrobe and one of them was black shorts and I almost kept them because I put them on and I was like wow these are really nice shorts and it took until I reframed that question and asked myself how do you feel in these shorts to realize that not great and all of this can also be said for what you already have in your wardrobe and keep around we sometimes keep items around because they're a nice item but it's all about how it makes you feel about yourself wearing it. And if it fits your personal style or if it falls under a proof of concept, is it something you actually wear? Because if you don't feel good in an item, it doesn't really matter that it's a nice item. Rule number seven for owning fewer clothes is to stop buying fast fashion. Basically, fast fashion is not made to last. So a lot of the things you buy fast fashion, they're both poor quality, poorly constructed, and often go off of trends, and just in general, quality is not so nice, and often will fall apart 
quite quickly. This means two things. Usually when we buy something fast fashion and on impulse, this item is of very little perceived value to us, which means we very quickly get tired of this item. And in the cases of not getting tired of a fast fashion item, when we like and appreciate it, we often only get a very short time to do that because they tend to fall apart pretty quickly. And if you are someone who is working on building a really nice, small, curated wardrobe, if every time you find something that works for you that you like to wear, you can only wear it about 20 times maximum because then you have to search for something similar, you will never get to a good place with your wardrobe because you will just not have the time to find something great over and over and over again. So buying better made clothing means that when you finally find something that becomes a stable for you, you can actually keep it around. If there's something I've learned from having a smaller wardrobe and be extremely meticulous, it is that there's a, such a big difference in buying something that is truly made to last and that doesn't fall apart pretty quickly. Because when you finally find that item that is just spot on, or if you already have it in your wardrobe, it fills out a gap you no longer have to worry about and you can start worrying about pursuing that perfection in other areas of your wardrobe. These were my short, quick and sweet rules for owning fewer clothes. If you like this video, please don't hesitate giving it a thumbs up so that I know it really does help out my small channel. And if you're here for the first time and not already subscribed, consider doing that because I would love to keep you around. Thanks for watching and farewell.